Section 3.2. I've taken each one of the pages from my math lab and we'll see how much we can get done in this video time. And what it has, it says, for the equation, find three ordered pair solutions by completing the table. And we've got plenty of practice at doing that. Then use the ordered pairs to graph the equation. All right. Problem number one, I'm going to come down and do my work. Number one has x minus y equals 7. And the first thing they give me is y is 0. So what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to plug in. I am supposed to plug in in the place, here's the equation, here's the given value from a table, and I need to plug it in. It's going to be x minus 0 is equal to 7. Well, what's x minus 0? Just x is 7. That means that the point, what is the point that I've just figured out here? It is 7 comma 0. Now, how did I know to write the 7 first? Because x, uh, x is the 7 and x is first. Okay. So I've got a point. Go back up. The next one, it says, let x be 3. Okay. x is 3, and I'm still doing x minus y equals 7. <coughs> it's the second point. So if I fill in a 3, minus y is equal to 7. How am I going to get y by itself? What's the sign on the 3? Yeah, you're going to need to subtract 3. That'll make that be a 0. So I have negative y is equal to 7 minus 3 is 4. Is it finished? No, I need to divide by negative 1. So y is equal to negative 4. It is the point 3 comma negative 4. What was the value here, 7? Okay. The last one, y is negative 3. The equation is still x minus y equals 7. Plugging in. Now, it's there is a likely place for an error here. This is x minus negative 3 is 7. There was a subtraction sign, and the y was negative. And that's why I have minus a negative. It becomes a positive. So it's x plus 3 is 7. Subtract 3. And x is 4. So it is the point 4 comma negative 3. Now, in order to get credit for the question, you have to do one, two, three little parts. But then there's something that becomes a little bit inconsistent. First of all, if you happen to be have very mature eyes like I do, it gets to where it's kind of hard to see little tiny things. For me, it's taking my glasses off. For lots of people my age, it's putting glasses on, but whatever. If you have trouble seeing, first of all, you can click this button right here that says click to enlarge, and it will make this big, okay? So it won't be hard. Now, I'm going to do that on my screen a different way. All right. When it says now to plot the solutions, we've never done this before. All of the solutions, the 7, 0, 
the 3 negative 4 and the 4 negative 3 are tied together by this equation. Something's going to show up when I plot them. So let's see if we can plot them. And then I'm going to erase them and talk to you about how do you do it in math lab. Okay, because that's going to be important. 7, 0. Okay, taking my classes off. All right, 7, 0. Start at the origin. Go to 7 in the x direction. And then do I go up or down? No. Nope, because it was 7, 0. Um, let me see if red shows up better. Okay, I made it kind of big, but that's so you could see it. 7, 0. The next point is 3, negative 4. Go right 3, go down 4, and that's 3, negative 4. And that is a leftover cursor dot. There we go. The third one is 4, negative 3. From the origin, go right 4, go down 3, and there it is. Whoops. All right. I put the three solution points up there. And what do you notice about the three points? They form a line. Do you remember me saying, I read it, I, sometime earlier it said, find the solutions to the linear equation. And I didn't even slow down about that. Linear. That's the adjective form of the word line. These equations have solutions which fall into a linear pattern. So I have a straight edge up here. If I draw, if I play kind of a con connect the dots, and of course I didn't even hit them all very well, they will always fall in a linear pattern. Do you remember a little while ago that we decided how many solutions does an equation have? Now we only found three. But how many could there be? Infinite. An infinite number. Well, how many points are on a line? An infinite number. Every single point on this line, if you were to take its ordered pair and check it, you would find out they're all solutions. Every point on this line is a solution, and every solution is on this line. You give me a different equation, it's going to have a different set of solutions. It's going to be a different line. Now. I'm going to make this go away because I want to show you how you do it with Math Lab. Although I'm not live in Math Lab. In Math Lab, when you're supposed to graph something and you're graphing a line, you pick this tool. Okay? Everybody see that right there? It looks like a line and it has two points on it. That's the line tool. When you do it, Although you have found out three solutions, you're only going to use two of them. Which two? It doesn't matter. But you're only going to use two. So here's what you do. When you click that, and then you go up here, a heavy circle will have shown up at the origin. You move that heavy circle to whichever point you want. Let's suppose I want to move it to 7, 0. Then I go to 7, 0, and I put a dot. Then, I don't think I have to click it again. I think I, yeah, I don't. I go to 7, 0, and then I just move my cursor to four neg um, 3, negative 4. 3, negative 4. While I'm moving, there's a line moving all around on my grid until I anchor it at 3, negative 4, and I click right there. I'm sorry, 3, negative 4. It's there. And the minute I click at the second destination, the line freezes. So when you click on the first one, the first point that you choose, now it doesn't matter. You had three to pick. Go to one of them. And you click. Now you've got this movable line. And you start moving your cursor, and your line's just going up and down and everywhere. When you go to the second location that you want, and you click again, your line freezes. And then you can say, check my answer. Is that okay? That's your tool. It's the line tool. Okay. We, um, we don't have a whole lot of time. 
but we will look at at least one more of these and then we'll pick back up with this on Wednesday. You might be able to get through the whole assignment from two examples, but I'm going to continue it on Wednesday because I'm going to continue the video. Okay, so this next one, which you can't see the other part here in class, here is a new equation and a new table to complete. It is y equals one-fourth x. Now, they could make it horrible, but they didn't. In fact, I'm going to move that down here. y equals one-fourth x. Now, in the table, what's the first value given? Zero. Zero. For which letter? X. X equals zero is the first thing given. So you're going to say y is equal to one-fourth of zero. And what is one-fourth times zero? Zero. So y is zero. That gives you the point zero, zero. What's the second value they give you for x? Negative four. Okay. So y is equal to one-fourth of x y is equal to one-fourth of negative four. They're going to give you numbers most of the time that turn out nice. Four goes in there once, four goes in there negative one. What are you going to get for y? You're going to get negative one. You're going to get one times negative one is negative one. It is the point negative four, negative one. Last one, what do they give you for x? 8. So I have y is 1 fourth times x. y is 1 fourth times 8. Can you do some reducing? And the problem is intended for you to be able to. 4 goes in there once, 4 goes in there two times. What is the value of y? 2. two. It is the point 8 comma 2. Now, this wouldn't have been any fun at all if they had given me x is 7, because I would have been taking a fourth of 7. Or if x is 9, I would have been taking a fourth of 9. But as long as the numbers they give me are divisible by 4, then it makes me happy. Okay, so I have these points, and I would fill them in. Okay, y'all help me out. Zero. It is zero Maybe one. and two. Okay, if you're going to graph it in my math lab, you will use this tool. You will go to whichever of the points you want to, which for me, I think I'll choose zero, zero, and I'll click at zero, zero. And then if I go to negative four, negative one, and the line goes crazy while I do that, but the minute I click there, a line will form, and that will be my line. Only you only need two out of the three, and it doesn't matter which two. Okay. So I'm going to stop this recording, and I'm going to call it 3.2 part one, and then I will pick <laughs> back up on Wednesday.